Hi, welcome back to the channel. David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium here, back with another video. Uh, today it's all about seeds and seed sowing uh, for Pelagoniums, of course. Um, so let's have a look. Hi, well, it's good to see you again on a sort of quite nice bright day. Um, has turned a bit cooler though in the UK. We're having relatively cool nights. Today, I actually want to do some seed sowing. And the fact that we're having some slightly cooler nights means that once we're sown, um, I will probably in the, at night have to take them into the house because I want them to germinate quite quickly now at this time of year. Because we've only got, I mean, we're into early August now, filming this today on uh, Tuesday the 3rd, 3rd of August. Um, so we've only got, well, sort of six to eight weeks of uh, good growing temperatures left. So it, we need to get things moving on um, for, you know, to get them to a suitable stage to be able to take them through the winter. It's all to do with regals for me this year. I'm, uh, I've am i done some crossing, some cross pollinating as we've seen in a previous video there, but uh, we'll take you through the sort of process that I've been through, um, harvest some seed, get them out there little pods uh, and do some sowing and hopefully see how they go, say over the next month to six weeks to see them germinating, hopefully. But I have been able to get some seed uh, from a regal cross that I've done, um, mostly from this plant here, which you can see has got a lot of heads on. Um, this is going to be released, this specific regal is actually going to be released by Fibrex Nursery next year. It's going to be called Shriven and Pearl. Um, it's my own and my wife uh, Susie's, it's our pearl anniversary next year. So it, it timed perfectly really um, for this to be named Shriven and Pearl. Um, so we're, we're naming it that, It'll be released by Fibrex uh, in the early part of next year in their um, new catalogue. Not exactly sure how they're sort of um, cataloging, lot. Not exactly sure when they're cataloguing next year, whether they're still going to be producing their catalogue or whether it'll all be done online. Anyway, I've been crossing a plant uh, called Marie Rudlin, and here is that plant. Now, I'll actually enclose this. The flowers on this have all died back, so I'll enclose just a picture of uh, Shriven and Pearl. It's actually the plant, if you want to go back two years, to the last physical show that we had. It won the best regal in the uh, 2019 physical show that we had at Fibrex there. But I've crossed it with this really quite stunning plant called Marie Rudlin. It's got a really attractive sort of raspberry colored bloom, but very sort of in a, on a white background, you've got a very dark crimson blotch. Uh, uh, with this sort of, you know, almost the white flecking because obviously the base was originally white. is very much overlaid with raspberry with these lovely dark crimson blotches. And I'm wanting to get some of this colouring, if I can, onto uh, Shriven and Pearl. So we, we'll have to see how it goes. Obviously, it's a very hit and miss process. Now, Shriven and Pearl has got everything I want in terms of growth because Marie Rudlin is... It's a little bit lanky, so I'm really wanting just to get the colouring from that onto some of this. So we may get some good contrasts. We don't know. I mean, this is white with a with some purple blotch on it. Nothing too spectacular. You can see from the picture that I just shown. But if we can get some, you know, introduce some of this colouring, who knows what may happen. And that's the wonderful thing about breeding. You never know what you're going to get because, of course, there's still very much distant history that's coming through. So you never really know exactly what you're going to get. But you can get a good idea from the seed parent because, of course, that should produce, in the main, the sort of growth basis for the plant. Um, which in this case I know is a sort of good quality show standard. Uh, so, you know, that, that's what we're going to hope for. So let's have a look. I've got plenty of seed off there. Harvesting seed is a relatively straightforward process if you get uh, 
dryish conditions, which, as I've said, has been a slight challenge this summer in the UK. In a lot of false ones, of course, because if you get one seed uh, develop in the in the in the sort of carpal head, which is what the head is called of the seed beak, um, you'll have five seeds that can potentially form, but of course only one or two, sometimes all five will form. But if you just get one or two, the whole head will form and the beak will form rather, and um, you'll just get a lot of empty cases or a lot of false ghost cases in sort of terms of fact. But um, I'm just trying to have a see if I've got anything left that I can show you here. I have got some seeds on another one, which I can show you if needs be. I've got one coming on there, but it's not quite ripe, so I can't use that. So what we'll do, we'll just zip over to this plant here. Right, okay, so there we are. I've homed in. This is another plant. I haven't got any seed that are coming out of that one as I've been nicking them off over time. Right, so we're coming in here. This is a beak that's nicely split. And you can see the awns, the little feathery parts of the awn. And it's a really ingenious, uh, you know, scenario because when the when the, the beak splits and you get these feathery awns that transport the little pod you can see at the base there. Hopefully you can see that. I'll use my knife and that may be a bit easier. Um, you can see the, the little pod there that contains the seed is all ready to fly off uh, in the wind and you get this little curly awn that's going to help just suspend it in the air to enable it to move away from the uh, original plant to, to drop down you know, into the ground and uh, get a bit of moisture and hopefully germinate. And that's how basically the pelagonium survives and um, regenerates itself naturally. But these have split at the end. The little pod is called the carpal. You'll get up to five, as I've said a number of times. I'm just going to pull these off because that one has got a seed in. That one there has got a seed in. That one, I think, is a ghost shoot, so a ghost uh, carpal, because what's happened is that one's germinate. Um, sorry, that one's cross pollinated, not germinated at this stage. Uh, and that one is a little ghost um, pod because it's obviously the beaks formed, but there's that one hasn't been cross pollinated, so that's dead. But you can see the fantastic uh, awn ready to do its little dance out in the wind. Uh, you can see how that spiral round. It really is clever stuff. Uh, but in there, there is a seed. But the pod has split neatly itself this time. So I'm just going to put the plant down. Right, okay. So I've gone down. I've, um, I've got a little lawn in here. And there is a the little seed in the pod. Hopefully you're going to be able to get that. Um, I'll, I've focused in as best I can and I'll probably uh, magnify it in the actual video but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the split. Uh, I'm just going to hold that there and see if I can tease out the seed. Um, the actual carpal has split. That's the little pod that it's in. Um, and I can see the seed is, is quite easily in there. I may need to just ease that back through there it is there's the seed i'm just pulling the carpal sort of backwards to enable the seed to ease out and there it is it's got to drop down into my little box there there's the seed plop there it goes yeah so there we are there's the seed there's not a lot to it it's just a plain seed now but i don't need to retain that seed but what i would do now if I was wishing to keep it, I would actually put it in some water. And what that will do um, is just dampen the seed and sort of weaken the case of that seed to enable it to be able to uh, germinate a bit quicker. And we'll see what I've done with my others in a moment. Right, and here we are then. So this is the batch of seed that I've taken from my Shriven and Pearl times Marie Radlin Cross. Um, I've had these in water for a good two or three days. 
and they're all swelling quite nicely to be honest um, I've got probably about what have I got 15 in there and they're all swelling up which is what you would probably expect them to do uh, because they've taken in a little bit of moisture um, it certainly helps them to germinate and I generally like to sow my seed shortly after harvesting so these have literally come off of that shriven um, pearl that we saw initially uh, I, they've gone into this little bowlette of water um, and now they're going to be sown which we, which I will show you okay so first things first uh, we need some compost um, I've mixed some up here whatever compost you happen to use and I mix it with 50% of that to a 50% of sand. It's, you know, it's nothing too overly complicated, but obviously very well drained, 50% of it being sand. So whatever your standard compost may be that you use, your sort of um, either peat-based or, you know, the non-peat-based, it's entirely up to you, but mix 50% of sand with it. So I've got plenty of that. And what I use, I use individual little pots and I put two seeds per pot. So I'm just going to load up my pots with this compost. Okay, so there we are. I've got um, nine pots because I've got 18 seeds. I've just counted them up. Uh, so we'll just home in and have a look at that now. Right, okay, so there we are. Um, we've got nine pots here. Just on my compost bench here. Uh, I've got a little butterfly in here, if you see it fluttering about. I'll let him out once I open up. Um, now, what I do, I've got a little stick here, and I just prod down. I'm going to make two holes in each one. I just drop the seeds down into those. Nothing too complicated at all. I tend to use pots because they're a little bit easier. You can use a seed tray, obviously, exactly the same. Um, something I didn't mention, of course, this is horticultural sand. Don't go using ordinary building sand or anything like that. Um, that I've mixed with this compost. Plot that there, one there, and there. There we go. Um, I get a bit deep. Uh, and it's just a question, I mean, I've only gone down, what, three mil, something along those lines. Um, and I just literally, it's probably easier to pick the seeds out, but they are quite nice and swollen, those, and I think they will germinate, hopefully quite quickly. Um, just drop that down into the hole, simple as that, like thus, push it down if it, resists a bit they need to be sort of just lightly covered by uh, two or three mil now i've i've had people that i you know say you know they need to be kept in the dark i just put them in a, a sort of a, a shaded place I, I never overly bother i've never found that it makes much difference to be honest i'm just flicking these down they don't need necessarily go up to any way round um, seeds will germinate they will either germinate well or you know they won't it's as simple as that I've I've never put them up a specific way um, I just chuck them in I've just got a little sprinkle a little bit of water over those now a little light sprinkle over all of them. Need to be wet. That's fine, just a light water. I mean, the, the compost itself has got a bit of uh, moisture in there. And that's fine. Um, now what I will do, I'm gonna put those on a tray because as I've said, uh, I need to be taking these indoors at night at the moment because we're getting relatively chilly nights. But I want these to germinate quite quickly. I, any other seed that I want to try and obtain this week, I will sow this week. I won't want to um, go much later than sowing anything this week, primarily because, as I said, we've got 
less than two months now, a good growing time to get young plants sort of potted up into at least a small pot like this. So I will not um, sow any more seed after this week because time is beginning to get short. Unless you've got a seed propagator and all that sort of thing, which you obviously can use. Uh, but then you've just got to decide how you run then into the winter with plants that you want to, um, you know, obviously take through the winter. Certainly with regals, you're not going to get any bloom until next year. And regals grow really quite vigorously during the, uh, the winter period. So um, that's something to consider. Okay, so there we are. They're, they're done. Oh, as I say, I'll put them on a tray, get them indoors overnight. So we're having slightly chilly nights at the moment. It's very warm in here during the day, so during the day is fine. I'll bring them up to here, keep them shaded, maybe tuck them under there somewhere where it's a little bit uh, more shaded. Right, okay, so I'm actually just returning now because I'm filming this in the afternoon. Normally I film my videos first thing in the morning when the bottom end is in the shade and the camera overheated. Uh, one of the faults with uh, uh, doing my filming in the afternoon. Uh, so I've actually put those um, pots now on a little tray already to go up to the house overnight and then I'll bring them down here during the morning, um, you know, to be in the warmth in the greenhouse during the day. Uh, obviously, if the weather warms up, then I'll leave them up here all the time. But um, hopefully they will germinate quite quickly. We will see how they go. Um, you know, I'll show you once they begin to uh, just germinate and carry on so we'll go on from there um, now obviously you're very much at the will of the gods um, with crossing any cross pollination you do anyone that watches my videos from last year at the end of last year will know that i sowed some stored robin louise videos uh, robin louise videos robin louise seeds um, and here is Robin Louise. It's a, one of my own. It always does quite well in the shows. Um, this one's just flowering. This, this is dwarf size. Now I sowed four seeds, four that I held in a pot for, for held in a pot for a number of years. I cross pollinated it with Gosbert Susanna, which is a zonal, but the stellas all came through. But just typically, all four of them have come through almost identical to Robin Louise. It's just one of those things, it does happen, uh, but you could almost guarantee if somebody said, give me some seed because I want that one, and you say, oh well, it, it could be anything, could come like anything, um, you could guarantee that it would come completely different, but when you're wanting something uh, a bit different, uh, typically this one hasn't done so. And all four of these seeds uh, virtually identical. This one is slightly darker. Um, it's got a medallion leaf, so I may keep that. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, but I've got another one there. That is identical. Somewhat surprising because Robin Louise has got a bit of a good sort of medallion zone to it. And this was pretty green leaf, but the bloom is virtually identical. Um, so I won't retain that one. Uh, but that's how it goes. You are, although you do cross to try and influence what you're going to get, uh, generally from the seed parent you get the growing qualities, which is what I'm after in the case of this shriveled and pearl. Um, so, you know, that's how you do it. Now, one thing I have done, I've done videos last year about crossing single varieties, i.e. regals. It's exactly the same for single zonals. The only variation is with doubles. Now, double zonals, it's a little bit different because primarily you've got a lot of leaves in, uh, a lot of um, petals in the way. So you just have to strip back the petals uh, to reveal the stigma and the pollen. Uh, so it's exactly the same, um, same way of uh, crossing. It's exactly the same way with the exception that you've got to sort of dig down uh, to reveal um, the stigma and the pollen, which you can then embed into the uh, receiving um, bloom uh, that you're going to use for your crossing. But that's the main difference. I will just strip this one back um, just to give you an idea that it is exactly the same. 
There's a small bit of pollen there. Let's just have a look. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Uh, so there we are. You can see the stigma poking up. Um, and that's got a... Sorry, I'm looking at two things at once here, but I'm um, looking at my camera as well. Uh, but so you, you can see the stigma poking up. Uh, and that's revealed, I would say that's probably re ready for pollen, that is, uh, looking at that there now. Um, but you've got a little bit of pollen bearing going on at the side, you can see one there. If I touch that, I'll probably knock it off. But it's exactly the same though with doubles, you just need to strip back all of the petals. So it's exactly the same scenario, but um, you just need to maybe do a little bit more work with the bloom just to reveal those reproductive parts that um, you can use for uh, cross-pollination. So there we are, there's a, a little bit about, uh, about crossing. Um, but this really, this first week of August in the UK is probably as late as I would want to sow without any heat. Um, I mean, if you've got a propagator, you can continue to do it right into the autumn. Uh, so you've always got to think about uh, going forward and growing the plants on um, to, you know, to be able to give you time to grow them on through the winter successfully. Uh, regals, uh, which I'm doing here, do grow very sort of quickly and speedily during the winter. So I will have no problem with getting growing on young plants um, into the future with those. So I'm now, uh, tomorrow morning, going to film another plant about repotting some of the plants that I've cut back. Um, so hopefully we'll get videos out uh, relatively quickly after each other. But after this one, bye for now, and I'll see you again just in a few days, hopefully. Bye-bye.